Charles Fakoha, High Brand TV Senior Analyst, joins us now. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good to see you again. Thank you for having me on your show, Frank. Okay. So um, let, let's talk about this first story. I'm, I'm sure it, this is in reaction to uh, or in respect to the Naira scarcity that is ongoing. Remember last week the NFC said they were proceeding on strike today, picketing all the offices of CBN uh, across the state of the Federation. But it looks like there's a talk or a conversation ongoing between uh, the CBN and, of course, the NLC as well. Uh, that um, I mean, the Minister of uh, Labor uh, for State in Gigi is also part of that. So talk to us about this. They, it looks like they are no longer proceeding on, uh, on that strike as discussed last week because... Perhaps we don't have a cash in the uh, in the circulation and anymore. So, do you think it is necessary for NFC to proceed on this strike? Well, thank you very much for that um, question. Yes, personally, I would say it is no longer necessary for NLC to embark on that strike they have uh, proposed because uh, the conditions in which uh, all the things they were agitating for, the Central Bank of uh, Nigeria has complied reasonably. So we can see cash now being available even at ATMs and in, in the banks. I must also want to commend the NLC for at least speaking for the people and at the same time for CBN also responding to the plight of the people. Again, the Minister of uh, Labor and uh, Employment was also very proactive. So we must give all the parties involved in terms of um, resolving that conflict because the issues must come up. Labor will agitate. It is now left for the authorities to respond to the demands of this labor. And you can see how CBN decided to say, Saturday, Sunday, please, bankers, come to work. And we're not seeing how NLC that is supposed to take a decision today. And I believe there is a responsible NLC, there are responsible labor leaders. And I believe with what they have seen, they, there will be no need for them to tell their members to embark on the strike. Mm, mm. I mean, we can't just let this go. I mean, but to to talk about to interrogate that must we um, always get to a point where you know we have to say okay, this of course if we don't address this this we go and we embark on a strike. So must we always take this route to get things done? Because um, even though. The time coincided with the fact that we now have CBN releasing more cash into circulation. It looks like the the uh, decision of NLC to proceed on, on picketing uh, uh, CBN ac across the, the CBN offices across the state of the Federation also has pushed a message uh, home. So talk to us about this. Uh, must we always get to this point before we can get a government of the day or be any institution to get things done? Well, I agree with you. We're not expected to get to this level before the government officials or whoever is involved to take certain decisions in the interest of um, the masses. Yes, this is a, it's, it's a conflict. Labor is agitating for the average Nigeria. And of course, CBN is doing a cash redesign or swap as it is maybe. Right. And there is a conflict. Nigerians are suffering. Labor has no choice. Now to say, please, if you don't want us to picket your office or go on industrial action, make sure that the plight of the masses is addressed. And then CBN had to comply. But like you said, I agree with you, we don't need to wait. Well, I guess, but again, uh, okay. let's um, commend both parties. Of course, we are still waiting for NLC to make their final decision not to go on strike him today. But I believe the NLC will not will direct their members not to embark on the strike. But we should not wait before we get to this um, extent. Mm. What is for them? Okay, Let, let's move on now. Perhaps one of the biggest, you know, headline there today is that the House of Representatives will on April 11, uh, 2023 grill ministers and other heads of ministry department and agencies of the federal government as well as oil companies and banks over the alleged illegal sale of 48 million barrels of crude oil valued at 2.4 billion i mean we've been talking about how to address oil theft so now we have the figure 2.4 billion 
Uh, so talk to us about this. Um, how do we get to this point? I mean, it's a concern, really, that how come 48 million uh, million barrels of crude oil will be shipped out of, uh, shipped out of the country without the knowledge of the security agencies, the government who is monitoring, who has put some measures in place to monitor these. So uh, talk to us about this. Yes, thank you very much, Frank. You see that uh, the issue of oil theft has been a recurring decima, and the government has uh, tried what they can to see that um, as a stop to this. Of course, you can see the government partnering so, with some youth of uh, Niger Delta to see that this crude oil theft is reduced to the various uh, minimum, and we are seeing the positive effect of that um, partnership between the federal government and some of the youths military mm. in the Niger Delta. Now, coming to look at this 48 million barrel, you know, what about um, $2.4 billion as far back as 2015. Now, it goes to show that there are issues of credibility when it comes to bulk and sale. We don't have this accurate figure. Now, if you also look at this story, we are told that this issue came as a result of the whistleblowing and other issues that made it came to the open. What I would advise the House Committee to do is to investigate it properly. And if there are government officials, maybe NNPC or any other agency that is involved, the people responsible should be brought to book so that they can serve as general to every other person. Because we cannot continue as a nation. Crude oil is our main source of revenue for now. And if we will just ship out that value without it getting to government coffers, it shows that we're in a big problem. There should be a, of course, we will be told that a total overhaul of the NNPC, which is now NNPCL or something as they call themselves. So for me, all those involved in the illegal sale of this crude oil should be prosecuted and let the law take its course, no matter who they are, no matter who and who is involved. Mm. Well, but like I, that's a, um, I can't agree less with you because that's more, very, very important and very, very critical because usually what you have after investigation and then that matter dies down there. So perhaps we, should, we we're going to be seeing a different approach and maybe new development in this investigation. Of course, it's just two weeks away. But specifically, if you can point out what and what, how the mode of investigation, what and what would you start seeing after this investigation? I know you talked about the fact that it should serve as deterrent, but do you think just, as, just investigating and exposing these people alone is enough? Hello, Charles. Are you there? Hello. Yeah, please go on. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Hello, yes. Okay, so so I, I was asking, um, so should we should we just stop? Do you think we should just leave it at the level of investigation alone? Uh, because usually what you have is that after investigation, um, you know, of a matter like this, it dies down there. Nobody hears anything about that uh, again yes we should not just stop at just investigating we've had so many investigations and nothing come out of it we are saying this one man that we already settled that for the military in terms of breaking of the the pipe the vandalizing of the pipeline and we are seeing a significant improvement in our production so this was that have happened before we should not just investigate and leave it there investigated the people that are involved should be prosecuted let them to court well, we have the law, uh, prosecuting agency, EFCC is there. This, are the, this is an economic crime. So the case should be referred to EFCC mm. after the investigation and let EFCC take it from there and prosecute those who have been culpable and let um, the court take care of it. If they are found guilty, of course, they should be sentenced. And if they are not guilty, let them be uh, discharged and acquitted. We cannot continue this way. We cannot afford just to investigate, name names, and that is the end of it. No. We must investigate, hand over to the prosecuting agency, and let them do their job. Mm. 
I think we also need to mention very crucial thing. I mean, patriotism also has to come in because the nation is losing uh, as um, you know high as that amount, 2.4 billion. Um, that's no small amount of money if you convert that to naira. That's in trillions of naira already, and that can pay for subsidy for a whole year or maybe take care of one infrastructure across the state of the federation. I mean, it's very very crucial. Um, so perhaps we should start talking about patriotism and how much the country is losing per day when we are losing our you know uh, national resources i think that the conversation we need to capture in our debate um as we try to solve the challenges in the oil sector don't you think so yes i agree with you this if they if they were patriotic at least they would know that yes this money this revenue is being used for the the country and look at that amount of money just going into private pockets. I think Nigerians should now begin to look at themselves as citizens of a country, not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. If I will quote a popular American uh, pre president that said, not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Mm. Let's leave it there, what you can do for your country. But let's proceed to the next one now. This one talks the, the fact that banks credit to the government rose by 3.77 trillion in the first two months of this year 2023 uh, figures if you look at the figures obtained from the central bank of nigeria that the total government credit which ended december last year was around 24.66 trillion and then also rose to 28.43 trillion as of the end of february this year talk to us about these is that a good news or bad omen? But I know, do know that uh, uh, in school of um, thought, sub-school of thought, or just my kind of economics, that it is better to borrow the government, right? It is be better to loan to your government than to loan to um, you know, other institutions. So do you think this will affect the banks in any way if you look at the credit that is coming from the bank to the government? Yes, those figures they are saying um, the, the credit to, uh, from banks to governments has increased so much. Well, I believe that the lending agencies, that's the money deposit um, bank, they should assess their credit policy mm. very well. It is not a matter of just giving out credit. You should do what we call the five C's of credit and ensure that this credit, whether it's going to a government agency or going to the private sector, proper analysis of the credit should be done so that they should also now be thinking of how to recover these monies when eventually they advance those uh, credit. Because when you are doing a credit, the most important thing is how are you going to recover this uh, credit that you have advanced? So for me, I think the figures are increasing, but the bank should also do a proper analysis of their credits. Mm, mm. I ask that question because there are concerns that, um, uh, you know, that banks are having issues, you know, global crises, the financial crises are hitting the banks. For instance, you saw that the Silicon Valley Bank failed and also following a week, we saw that uh, the Signature Bank also f had issues as well, including the Swiss, uh, you know, Credit Suisse as well, also having issues. So that's borrowing a leaf from there. Do you think it's something that we need to be cautious about so as to it perhaps address um you know the banking system here to tighten up every loophole in case of uh failure yes i agree with you and you know nigeria we have an history of banking failure in the early 90s and the mm. financial authorities were proactive that before any banks would go under in the country today the central bank will have done their own work and of course intervene to protect depositors. Yes, with what is happening globally now, the CBN should be cautious of it. And of course, ensure, I always mention, regulation and compliance is key. Inspection is also very, very key. If you have put regulations in place, ensure that this is being implemented. And how do you know it's been implemented? Regular inspection. So to ensure that the banks are playing according to the rules and regulation, they are not 
threatening depositors' funds because we know how critical the financial or the banking system is to the economy. When there is any problem with the banking system, of course, the economy is in trouble. So CBN should tighten its regulation, improve on its inspection, and also training and in retraining of its field officers to always understand when there are signs of any bank uh, crisis or bank failure, looking at the figures on ground. Mm. All right, let's move to the next uh, top business headline. Uh, uh, mobile subscriptions have risen by 4.61 million to about 226.8 million subscription in 2022. This is according to industry statistics from the Nigerian Communications Commission there. So uh, they are giving this figure following the trend of sustained growth uh, in the last one year, especially the one recorded in 2022. And they are saying that uh, this has given opportunity for the, uh, the broadband also has increased. This internet subscription has increased. So first, let's talk about, you know, the market potential for the telecom sector. And secondly, let's also look at the services that this, because as we grow, as the, uh, the capture more subscription in their in their data there is also a need to also enhance their capacity to service these all of this subscription but it looks like there is a bit of uh, downtown uh, each time we talk about downtime in the internet subscription and services as well so why this is good news in terms of market that he has provided there's also an issue of quality service on the part of the telecom operators as well speak to these issues Yes, thank you very much. You can see that, yes, the telecom industry has done quite well in terms of what you have mentioned, in terms of increase in subscription. Yes, I always maintain, you know, MTN is the largest with over 92 million subscribers, Lovacom, 60 million, and of course, um, F and then um, 9 and um, mobile. The issue for me is not about increase in subscription. It is about the broadband penetration, that is the quality of the service. We are running this program via Zoom, and occasionally we are seeing the quality of the network. Once in a while, it will trip up another, because I am from, I mean, I'm broadcasting from a remote area. So I want, apart from increasing subscription, the quality. Let these telecom operators improve in their infrastructure. I know it is not easy maintain their marks and other facilities. But for the customers to have quality service, we have always said Nigerians are willing to pay for the service as long as the service is improved and of course the subscribers are able to the subscribers as they are Hello Charles. I think Charles was trying to talk to us about um, you know what they should start doing to increase their um, the enhance the quality of their services, especially if we want um, a efficient you know services sustained. They must improve, or there must be an improvement in their infrastructure base as well. But meanwhile, uh, talk about broadband. I mean, you talk about we should also be able to increase uh, broadband penetration as well. As of today, the figure we have is that broadband penetra penetration is around forty point four nine percent. It's not even up to fifty percent. Uh, uh, yet so talk to us about that one um how how we should start a conversation without deepening because there are more businesses uh, coming on we're talking about 5g now these are some of the issues that we need to start talking about and this is business uh opportunities for these operators so talk to us about this please when we talk broadband penetration mm. the rich Even in my current location now, Patani in the uh, Patani local uh, I guess I guess we're having uh, issues with connection uh, here in uh, Charles there, and I'm mean, trying to make very important. Um, 
uh, important point there. Yes, of course, over time we have this issue of uh, internet connection as well. So that also do wait um, poor signal. So there has to be infrastructure on ground to increase to ensure that there's an efficient internet. Uh, you know, services for use as well, because a lot of businesses uh, are, are on the internet. Uh, then we also talk about the uh, payment system. So these are uh, quite a lot of digital banking uh, companies are coming up. Uh, just recently, the CBN um, issued about 10 licenses to 10 new digital um, you know, banking firms. And that, of course, is quite a lot. So how do we maintain you know, efficient internet services? That's the question. So, uh, Charles, are you there? So I think we should wrap up from there. Can you hear me now? Yeah, please, go ahead. Okay. Yes, you have mentioned it. It's not just licensing operators to be in the digital space. Mm. It's to ensure that as a licensed operator, these operators have the capacity and capability to deliver first-class services, so that as I'm broadcasting from a rural, rural area, right. the broadband penetration should increase, and it is the infrastructure. Like I was saying earlier, mm. I went around this locality and I discovered that the MTN Max is not even close to this location. They are taking it from another neighboring community. It's only the Airtel Max that is in this uh, particular village. That is an issue when it comes to penetration. Broadband penetration. So the telecom operators need to improve on their infrastructure. It is very, very key for we to have increase in their services in terms of the quality of what the customers are able to make use at any point in time. The newly licensed digital banks, yes, they are also coming on stream. This will also increase our in terms of payment system for our financial system but again with all this coming into play the infra critical infrastructure needs to be improved upon. Mm. and and um, i can agree with you less and if you look at some of these uh, you know operators you, you mentioned mtn you mentioned global call mentioned airtel and nine mobile as well especially with uh, the kind of earnings that is coming in for them, I think this is quite uh, it's all, it's natural. Will I say it makes sense to start, uh, you know, enhancing some of this uh, uh, infrastructure because some of them, like you said, they really need to be enhanced or improved. So thank you so much, uh, Charles Fakuha, for your time uh, this morning. We appreciate you for coming on board. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Frank, for having me on the show. Thank you. Have a great day. So, coming up on the program after this break, we head straight to the equities market and we look at the sentiment, uh, the negative sentiment, uh, which is really, really dominant in the market now. The equities market declined by about 2.08% uh, to open the week in the negative territory. Well, that's our focus next when we return from this break. Please stay with us. <music>